Welcome again to section five. Uh, today's session will be very exciting uh, because we will talk about the 5G Nokia equipment and evolution. Obviously, uh, Nokia is an amazing vendor, uh, especially in the terms of 5G. They have uh, introduced overall, if you're working specifically in the operator, you will know that uh, Nokia equipment is one of the most compact and smart equipment uh, globally. Uh, they are very challenging uh, Huawei and Ericsson and they are moving uh, very fast uh, towards 5G. Uh, their CEO uh, have mentioned that uh, even now Nokia have a 5G uh, commercial contract is even more than uh, more than Huawei. So I'm, I'm very excited to, to start speaking about uh, Nokia solution today and then let's continue our course. Now today we will talk about the next generation of the Node B or the G Node B in 5G. Well, uh, 3GBB release 15 has introduced a new concept of the G Node B, and Nokia is very vocal uh, about uh, introducing the solutions. Uh, the solution that the G Node B is, is somehow is divided into two entities or three entities as compared to what we have. Uh, been seeing in the 4G. The 4G, the E Node B was just a one entity and there were not uh, many entities within the E Node B. Uh, but with the 5G and moving forward again with the Open RAN cloud network, soft defining network, uh, virtual network, all these solutions, we are trying to be more flexible with our network. That's why in the 3GBB it has divided the G Node B into main two parts. One is the G Node B central unit and the other is the G Node B distributed unit. So the central unit are and distributed unit, both of them are parts of the G Node B and located in the G Node B. And there's an interface between them which is called F1. So a central unit can have many F1 interfaces connected to many G Node B distributed unit. And the distributed unit can cover up to one or many cells depending on the configuration and we will see this later as we move on. And one more concept here, very important concept to realize in the 5G, that the G Node B is more of a logical entity as compared to the 4G where most of the vendors were focusing on a physical entity, physical hardware and built-in software. So we are moving toward a new traditional, a new solution, not traditional, uh, uh, that we are looking to the wireless equipment or the RAN itself uh, as in a very different way. Back then we have talked about the EBC and make, make it uh, more virtualized. Uh, so you will, if you work it in, in different operators, you will be able to uh, notice that some operators have already uh, virtualized their core network, uh, where you just uh, and able to upgrade it uh, uh, fastly with just adding uh, more shelves and more equipment within the same. RNC and BSC have uh, the same solution. But when it comes to RAN, it was always complicated uh, to virtualize the RAN. But with the new concept of the 3GBB, in the 5G that make the G Node B is more uh, flexible toward being uh, um, uh, uh, revolutionized. So the G Node B here is becoming a logical, uh, a logical NG RAN uh, node providing the new radio user plane and the control plane term and termination towards the UE. So the logical entities are a central unit and here the central unit will focus or its job will be on the upper layer. This means that the RRC layer and the control plane and this SDAB and BDCB protocols on the user plane. People who doesn't know SDAB, it's a new protocol in the standalone uh, network and you will able to get more details from our course of the 5G fundamentals. So the SDAB and BDCB protocol or the upper protocols will be uh, the responsibility of the central unit which controls the operation of one or more uh, uh, distributed unit or GNUD BDU. Uh, the GNUD B central unit also terminates all the F1 interfaces connected with the GNUD B distributed unit as per 3 GBB uh, 38.41. So last thing is the distributed unit. Then the distributed unit um, uh, will handle 
uh, the lower layers mean three layers as RLC is a Mac and the physical layers will be handled uh, by the distributed unit uh, so the operation uh, of, of the distributed unit will be partly controlled for sure by the central unit and uh, it will support one or multiple cells as we have mentioned and uh, it terminates the F1 interface uh, which at the end of the day will be connected to the central unit. So with this new, new um, concept the G node B is divided into two parts. Talking about the deployment um, itself of, of the G node B. So now what we have introduced is a theoretical uh, part of, uh, of, of, of the G node B, how, it's, how the new concepts are being introduced. Uh, so it's a new logical entity which is con composed of the central unit and the distributed unit. But from the physical entities, uh, we are dividing this or Nokia are dividing this on, into three parts. RAC or the radio access cloud radio access unit and radio unit the radio access cloud is a deployment entity hosting uh, the cloudified functions uh, and it will most probably handling uh, the layer 2 and the non real time functions which means the radio access cloud will be a more uh, towards uh, cloudification uh, as compared to the distributed unit so, and the radio access unit will be connected to the central unit as we will see uh, later on. So the radio access unit uh, will be the deployment entity which hosting non-cloudified baseband functions. This means that the, it will be implemented at the site itself of a G node B. Uh, and it will have the baseband processing which is supposed to handle the layer 1 and layer 2 real-time functions. So the non-real-time functions will be held on the radio access cloud but the non-real-time but, uh, but the non uh, real time, uh, function, the real time functioning will be held in the radio access unit. The radio unit which is the last unit here it will be the deployment entity hosting the radio frequency and the main functional of, of the G node B. So to summarize this, the radio access cloud will handle layer two and the upper layer, non-real time functions. It will be more cloudified. The radio access unit will handle layer one, layer two, real time functions. It will act as a baseband unit. And the radio unit will handle all the radio, the radio frequency functioning at the G node B. So the radio unit and the radio access unit are more connected to the distributed unit and the radio access cloud are more of the function of the G node B central unit. In many cases, the radio access unit and the radio unit both together are also commonly referred as a radio access point. So both of them are the radio access point in, in many definitions. How we transfer this to a hardware building blocks, talking about the hardware specifically. In Nokia, we have said, okay, we have the logical entities as defined by the 3GBB. We have the physical entities and the central unit will be connected to the radio access cloud. The distributed unit, it will be the scope of the radio access unit and the radio unit, both of them together. And then we connect this to the product itself, which will be the radio access cloud will be to into the NCU, NSC, NCR uh, product, which will be more cloudified. The radio access unit will be the baseband unit, and there is amazing solutions from Nokia called Nokia Air Scale System Module, and we will talk in more details about this one, which is acting as a baseband unit that we have explained before, or the concept of Huawei. The baseband is uh, is introduced in a masterpiece of Nokia called uh, Air Scale, and it's very compact, and we will talk about it. And the AEU is supposed to be the radio unit. The AEU uh, that we have highlighted before uh, is, was one of the major innovation of Huawei. Most of the vendors have adapted it and we call it MAA or Nokia call it uh, Massive MIMO Adaptive Antenna. Different names but at the end of the day uh, it's the same product. So by looking into this uh, graphs we are able to map what we have learned theoretically was what exactly uh, practically as a hardware equipment in Nokia.